Oh, hello again. Um, thought I'd uh, <clears throat> make a little video here about uh, how to uh, wire up a uh, three-phase motor even though you only have single-phase power at your home or place of business. Concept's pretty simple. We take single-phase supply. Um, we had a capacitor, a couple of uh, momentary switches, a magnetic contactor, and a three-phase motor and we can make this all run even though it's supposed to run on three phases we're going to trick it by running it on single phase once this motor starts running on its own the third leg will come from induction of the spinning rotor inside of the field housing simply how to wire this thing is you'll have a, a magnetic contactor here um, you'll supply it with uh, one phase of power, second pole, you'll have a second phase of power. Red and black here in uh, North America will signify 24, or, excuse me, 240 volts. Um, basically what happens here is we have incoming power. This power is split right here at its junction, the first pole of the contactor. It provides power for one side of the coil this coil is 240 volt operation um, so we'll be using both legs in order to bring the coil voltage uh, to operate this magnetic starter the secondary connection on this first line will go to the capacitor which we will use for starting coming out of the capacitor it goes to one half of a normally open switch so when you push the button, um, the switch closes and power from the capacitor will go through the switch and into the, we're going to call this blue leg, the generated leg. Um, this is um, a European motor. So the, um, the wiring is such that it has a black wire, um, a brown wire, and a blue wire. Um, in North American um, wiring, uh, we generally omit the uh, the blue wire um, or put another power pole to it. Um, it is not neutral here in the United States. Just as a sidebar there. Um, going back to the magnetic contactor where our second pole comes in, we're going to utilize one leg of that power to operate our control circuit that uh, basically um, turns off and turns on this magnetic contactor. Um, a sidebar to that, a magnetic contactor sounds like it's a really neat device and has all kinds of mystery to it. Um, really, if you break it down to its basic components, it has a coil inside of there that um, once you put power through that coil, it magnetizes and anything iron uh, will be drawn towards it. Well, when it magnetizes, it completes the circuit inside of the coil and the coil magnetizes and basically pulls down on an iron plate to make all three poles on this contactor contact at the same time. Um, it's a neat device, uh, very uh, re reliable, um, used in all industries basically. Um, magnetic contactors are used in different forms. Some of them are a lot smaller than this, and some of them are a lot bigger than this. Uh, this is a run of the mill. I believe this one's good for uh, pretty close to 15 horsepower or so, uh, judging on the contactor uh, size and all that. Um, but uh, basically, um, one half of our control circuit um, uh, goes to our stop switch. Our stop switch splits it into two different um, uh, wires here. Uh, one wire is going to be for our holding circuit which will go basically on the bottom of uh, the contactor on uh, this would be an auxiliary contact on this side of it. Um, the other side of it uh, will have switch um, so when I hit this there'll be both power on both sides of this contactor. So when this contactor pulls in it will have the propensity to keep it pulled in until you hit this stop switch. Once you hit the stop switch it breaks all power to the control circuit on it and the control will drop out. On this side of the contactor we just have 
two of the poles of the motor. The third pole here, um, we're going to uh, fake it out and we're just going to give this a DC boost by this little capacitor here when we call to do so with the uh, green start switch. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, plug this uh, apparatus in and uh, show you guys uh, how it works when it's all plugged in. Still haven't figured out how to use this camera yet. <clears throat> but anyways, um, we're back to the mayhem here. Uh, simply what I did here, um, I added a uh, switch here. Um, I didn't hook up the ground, uh, but it should be hooked up, believe that. Um, and I just gave us uh, two power wires of uh, 240 volts. Um, we're going to test out our control system here. Um, if everything's done right, this uh, motor should start turning here as soon as I hit the screen button. And it does. The uh, motor sounds like crap because uh, it's really old and the bearings are bad. But uh, believe it, it's running on single phase power right now. Um, contactor's pulled in and it's running on its own. Uh, anytime you want to stop it, you hit the red button and it stops. Um, all of the power is still on this side of it. When you uh, hit the green button, contactor drops in, transfers power to this side of it as well as the control circuit of it. Um, the control circuit sounds like it's a technical term, but uh, basically uh, think of it as a bunch of light switches uh, that are momentary. Um, you have to hook them up in such a way that um, uh, the coil keeps this uh, operation pulled in and working, but um, uh, basically think of it as a really expensive light switch. Now this motor has a gear reducer on it. Um, the motor RPM is probably somewhere in the 1800 RPM range. Um, it has, I think, a uh, probably a 60 to 1 or uh, possibly an 80 to 1 uh, reducer on it, which really takes this uh, output speed down. But uh, believe it, the uh, motor is running at uh, full load and um, uh, full speed. And um, uh, your grinder or uh, basically any other machine tool could uh, run uh, the very same way. Uh, send me a um, a question or um, a, a, a comment if you want to but uh, basically this is how to run three phase equipment at your house with uh, really uh, no special equipment other than a magnetic contactor and I, I don't believe everybody's got a capacitor laying around in their garage but um, you can get those um, either online or from uh, uh, big name supply companies, uh, Granger being one of them. Um, I believe that's where this um, uh, capacitor came from. Uh, for this small of a motor, I just put like uh, the 40 uh, microfarads to it. Um, big motors, you know, seven and a half horsepower, 10 horsepower motor, you're probably gonna have to have in excess of uh, five to 600 uh, microfarads of capacitance to uh, get one of those bitches fired off. But um, uh, these little motors, uh, I think this one's probably not even a half horsepower or whatever. Um, 20, 20 microfarads would probably get this motor fired off, but uh, this was the first uh, capacitor that I grabbed out of the stack, and uh, it's within the range. Um, you know, 10 microfarads one way or the other really isn't going to be all that big a difference. You go 100 microfarads one way or the other, that can be a little bit bigger of a difference, but um, if you're going to err, Air to the plus side, it just um, uh, makes the motor fire off faster um, within reason, of course. But uh, thanks, guys, for watching this stuff. And, uh, yeah, if I uh, brought up more questions than answers here, by all means, fire away. And I'll do my best to answer them up. Thanks.